Hello folks, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about IAM policy evaluation. That is whenever there is a conflicting IAM policies, how does AWS resolve them? If we take a simple example of a an user and depending upon his role in the organization, he might be part of multiple IAM groups. For example, if he started in the organization as a developer and slowly became a manager for that uh, team itself, or he might have moved on to another team in the same organization, so it is possible that he is part of multiple IAM groups and one group can give him access to a certain resource whereas another group might deny access to the same resource. In this use case as you can see in the image here, let us say there are two groups and one is giving access to an S3 bucket and another one is denying access to the same S3 bucket or any other S3 bucket. How does AWS decide which policy to apply? Should it give access to the S3 bucket because there is an allow access or should it deny because there is a deny access? The only way to understand easily is going ahead and simulating this in our environment. So I'm going to take you to my account where I have already created a test user. You can see here I've just logged into the main account and I have a test user. I've logged in with the test user also in another tab. But before going to that, let us go ahead and check the permissions of this test user. You can see here this is the test user profile and if I go to permissions as of now this user does not have any permissions or does not have any group membership. So let us use this other tab and log into my account here as a test user and if I go into S3 now you can see here you can the right hand side top corner you will notice that this is a test user account and the access is denied so no permissions so far. So what we are going to do now is we are going to create two groups and I'm just going to call the first one as allow group click on next step and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this user or uh, S3 full access permissions so click on next step just click on create group so we have created one group which gives anybody part of this group S3 full access and I'm going to create another group called as deny access group so basically here there is no default deny policy so we are going to write a custom policy for this group so I'm just going to open this up and go to permissions. Easily what we can do is we can do an inline policy here. I'm just going to paste a custom policy here. So you can see here there are two policies. The first one is deny and the second one is allow. So I'm just going to remove this uh, allow here. I'm just going to say deny for all S3 actions and for all S3 buckets. So I'm just going to apply this policy and give a name. So whenever a user or any resource is part of this group they will be denied access so what we are going to do as a next step is well, let us make the user member of these two groups I'm going to go to groups add groups I'm just going to say member added add groups so now we are all set so now my test user is part of two groups and one group gives him access to my S3 bucket and another group denies access to my S3 bucket just to be sure we have some S3 buckets you can see here I'm in this account so if I go to my services and choose S3 we will be seeing some buckets so we can definitely be sure whether the access is working or not in the other tab. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the other tab and hit refresh and see which policy is taking into effect. Before going ahead and see the answer go ahead and hit the pause button and think about it for a moment and how do you think you will be resolving this situation. What practically happens is in a real life is Sometimes your developer will come and say, hey, I am not able to access this resource. What is happening? And you might find the developer in part of multiple groups. And this is a real life scenario where you will come across and you need to troubleshoot. Until you understand why this is taking into effect, you will not be able to resolve those kind of conflicts. Take a moment and come up with your own answer. I will also give the link to the Amazon documentation, which will help you to read further more on this topic. If you want to know the answer, Continue and see what happens next. Here we are. I'm just going to re refresh my screen and you can see here when I refresh my uh, S3 page, nothing happens. I'm not getting access to any resources and when even if I refresh my page, it's not happening. Even if I log out and log in, which I can do because if you think that the policies have not taken into effect, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sign out and I'm going to sign in again with the same username. So I'm just going to check the S3 resource again and you can see the user is access denied. The reason for that is whenever there is an explicit deny in the user policy, any other allow policy that can happen after that or before that 
will be overridden. So whenever there is any policy anywhere in the user's account, it might be coming from an organization policy, it might be coming from the group membership, it might be an individual IAM policy attached to this user. So anywhere within the policy hierarchy, if this user has an explicit deny for a particular resource, the deny is going to take precedence and allow wherever it might be will not take into precedence. So to show that what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back to my previous console and let us go back to the previous screen. I'm just going to remove the deny access now. So basically we are removing him. I'm just giving the allow access and almost immediately it should take into effect. If I just go ahead and refresh this screen, we should see this uh, user having access to the S3 bucket. So make sure you write policies such that the users don't have explicit deny if you want them to have access to the certain resources. In the next use case, I'm going to show you, I'm going to attach some policies to S3 bucket itself and attach some policies to the IAM user and see how the conflict is getting resolved. If you are still having doubts or questions, go ahead and put them in the comments or the feedback section. We will help each other and learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.